Okay, first example. Let's compute the surface area of the plane z over 3 plus x over 4 plus y over 5 equals 1 in the first octant. So the first octant, that's where x, y, and z are all positive. All non-zero. Okay, take a pause, take a stab at it. And what you should stab at is probably a picture of something like this. We have drawn this plane or some permutation of this plane many, many times. So uh, here's my z-axis, y, x. Here is the x-intercept. Here is the y-intercept at 5, and the z-intercept is at 3. So here's the region of the plane in this first octant. Okay, so what's the surface area of this plane? It's the area of this triangle. So even without any calculus, we know how to do this. We can take a cross product. So uh, what would that be? It should be the cross product of, uh, I'm going to take mine, my vector is to go from x from uh, this point to this point and from that point to that point. And so uh, the first one I drew, going from x, the x-axis to the y-axis, that's going from, that's decreasing my x value by 4, increasing my y value by 5, and doing nothing in my z coordinate. Cross, uh, the other one is decreasing my x value by 4, not changing my y's, and increasing my z's by 3 an absolute value. This should give me my surface area. Uh, oh, and I forgot. I should divide it by 2 because surface area cross product gives you the area of the parallelogram, and I only want half of that because I want the area of the triangle. Okay, that's a little disingenuous, so let's just also check that we can compute this with uh, integrals, or at least set it up, and then uh, you can go figure it out on your own. Uh, so, um, let's see, I computed this, and this should be uh, 769, take the square root of that, square root of 769 divided by 2, that's your surface area. So let's get the same thing using integrals. First, let's solve the equation for z, because I want this in the form z equals a function of x comma y. And so if I solve this equation up above for z, I think that my, uh, I should get 1 minus a bunch of things and then times 3. So 3 times 1 minus x over 4 uh, minus y over 5 is equal to z. So this right here is my function, 3 times 1 minus x over 4, minus y over 5. Uh, and what I want to compute is both fx and fy. Both are not very bad, fx. Uh, I'm going to get 3 times negative a quarter, so negative 3 fourths. And fy is negative 3 fifths. So you should be able to read those off quite quickly. And then my integral, I'm going to set up tells me I need to compute the surface area over a region, and we'll come back to that in a second to figure out exactly what that is, of uh, the square root of 1 plus fx squared, so that's 9 sixteenths, plus 3 fifths squared, so that's 9 twenty fifths. I'm going to tell you right now the place that most people will make a careless mistake is just dropping this plus 1. Uh, you should think about this as, you know, the contribution of the z component of the normal vector. Um, yeah, so not much to say there. Uh, and then I need a dx dy, so da. Um, now, what is r? r is the xy region that is the base that lives below the surface area that we care about. So because the surface area we care about is this green triangle that I've outlined, uh, what you'll realize is that the in the xy plane underneath it, we have this 
triangle. And that is the base of this little tetrahedron that we're going to integrate over in the xy plane. You could also set this up by solving for y or solving for x in the original equation. You could set this up with bases either in the x z plane or in the y z plane, um, but that they don't save you any time. So I think this is equally as, as hard as both of those. Uh, so let's just draw a little picture of that in the x y plane. So what we have there, my x intercept is at 1, 2, 3, 4. And my y intercept is at 5. Uh, my scale's not great. But it doesn't matter. Right? And this line, so here's the region that I shaded in yellow over there. Uh, I think I want to solve for what this line is. Well, this is the plane z equals 0. So uh, z equals 0. Only kind of nauseating to look at. So, uh, this line is just x over 4 plus y over 5 equals 1, because that's what you get when you set z equal to 0 in the original plane. And now I can choose my bounds. So uh, I think I'm just going to erase these, uh, this r that I picked over here. Uh, no, let's, let's not do that. Let's leave that as R, and I'll just uh, scroll up and give myself a little bit of room. So my new bounds, uh, let's do, I guess I wrote dx dy. Let's do dy dx. Let's move, move uh, the x's on the outside. So I'm going to make x start at 0 and go up to 4. And y is going to start also at 0. And then, oh, that is... Not the way I should draw it. If I'm at a given x, my y's go vertically. Uh, so it goes up to that line. That line is y equals 1, 5 times 1 minus x over 4. And then my integrand is still this little expression. So, uh, yeah, 1 plus 9 sixteenths plus 9 twenty fifths. And I've swapped these bounds. So this is dy dx. And uh, now we're in a good good place to solve this. This is a constant, so you should be able to uh, pull that out of the integral just by combining the fractions. And this integral in terms of y is not going to be very hard, and then you add an x, and the integral in terms of x is also going to be really easy. Uh, so I'm going to leave this to homework. You should be able to fill this in and just get 729 square root over two. Have fun.